Bienvenidos and welcome back to Puro Pinche Gol, a place where we discuss all things USMT y la selección mexicana. My name is Adrian, joining me on this uh, very depressing and sad uh, Sunday for us Tigres fans. Um, my co-host Tocayo, Adrian. Adrian, man, uh, he's still in shock still. It's going to be take a while for this thing to kind of heal there. Yeah, man, it's a very sad Sunday if you ask me. And I just want to say, Galon, this is on you, man. This is all on you, dude. You are the salado. Please stop, for the love of God, supporting Tigres. Like, just stop, man, please. Please. Shout out to one of our listeners and one of our friends, Galon, who, uh, yeah, he's uh, the jinx of Tigres. Um, all of Tigres' mm-hmm. miseries are attributed to, to Galon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, very um, one-sided final there. Uh, two red cards with Tigres, 3-0 uh, loss at the end of the day. Uh, 4-1 aggregate. America has uh, got their 14th Liga Mekis title. So um, there you go. Uh, but we're not here to really discuss and analyze that match. We're going to be analyzing the Juego Molero that took place. Um on Saturday between Mont- uh, Men- Mexico, sorry, I'm saying Monterrey, between Mexico and Colombia, um, the match that was played in front of over sixty thousand fans there in Los Angeles at the United Airlines Field in California, um, Mexico and Colombia, you know, ended up playing a. I don't think any of us expected it to be as uh, decent of a match it was as it was. You know, being a partido molero there, um, it was actually competitive. Three um, two, Colombia ended up winning. Uh, scoring there kind of at, at the late late in the match. Um, I think it was like in the 90-something minute. Um, but, yeah, ultimately, Colombia prevailed there. And, um, yeah, man, this will kind of be our six things we learned. Uh, Adrian, man, why don't you kind of get us uh, started on, on the first uh, thing we learned from this partido? All right, I'm going to start with a good one. Um, I, I think it, was, it was difficult to find some good things in here, but I think the first thing that we have to say was actually not bad was uh, didn't miss him that Jimmy Lozano's side showed, especially on, you know, the very early stages of the match. Um, you know, <clears throat> if, you, if you take a look at the entire game overall, you can, you can definitely uh, agree with, with us that, um, yes, Mexico lost, but there wasn't be, it wasn't because of lack of uh, offensive proposals or because of not being able to uh, have a, an aggressive uh, moving forward or forward attacking uh, game style. I think throughout the match, you could see both wingers going uh, up and down. Uh, Mexico was quick to do the break whenever they stole the ball, the ball back or recover the ball. They were able to move in, in offensive transition with ease. Um, and I really liked it. Um, I think this also, it's a good, ex- a good example or a good, uh, I guess, showcasing of El Jimmy Lozano style finally settled, I guess, settling in or sitting well with the players. I, I think for the last uh, six months with El Three, we have seen a team that has been able to somewhat start to look like a, like a squad that has a defined game style. So that's a good thing for me. So I guess we're finally seeing, uh, you know, El Jimmy Lozano hand, Jimmy Lozano's hand over El Three. Yeah, um, oftentimes with previous managers we've seen, uh, you know, the A team, the 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 Estrellas from Europe or whatever, the big league and making stars that that, that form the A team, have their own style of gameplay, right? And then the B C teams, like this was a C team, uh, have a completely different style. I think, uh, you know, when Diego Coca started back in earlier this year, that he kind of made that promise to kind of from Fuerzas Básicas, from the very uh, youth teams all the way to the team, the main team, have a defined style of play, which ultimately, obviously, he never got a chance to implement since he got fired uh, right before the Gold Cup. But um, Jimmy Lozano, now we're starting to see that, uh, you know, no matter if it's his A team or his C team, they're all pretty much playing similar style of attack, of attacking football. We know he likes, he really likes that 4-3-3 or that 4-2-3-1, which is the one he implemented yesterday. But he's kind of settled on those two formations. Um, so it, 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 I agree with you, a, a good positive there. I also want to add to that, um, he also had seven uh, debutantes, seven uh, pe- uh, players make their um, debut on this on this match, so it's always good. I don't know if, uh, you know, who, who really from this team, other than maybe El Chino and Jordi Cortizo, make the A team. Not much, but at least, you know, some players here got their chance, and uh, there, there were some, some, some positive performances from some players. Yeah. Um, I guess Tony Rodriguez says he's the third keeper, but... Uh, and, and you know this is a good point that you bring up. It's seven new players, and we were were still we were still able to see El Jimmy Lozano's uh, style style of play with you know essentially a brand new team. 
or right. half of half of a brand new team. Yeah. Yeah. So good implementation there from Jimmy, man. Uh, what else you got for us? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with a neutral, man. And I think uh, this is perhaps the only neutral that I was able to find. Yes, this was a Partido Molero. Yes, this was a very odd, I guess, a schedule-wise uh, game because it was definitely not a FIFA uh, match or friendly match. And it was, you know, in the middle or I guess a couple, a day before the big uh, day, yeah. Yankees final. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. It was just kind of weird to see it. I guess Zoom is just trying to you know cash in as much as they can before the holidays are over um but i do have to say that this is perhaps a partido molero that wasn't that boring as you mentioned and it's definitely with a better team and i'm gonna use my quotes just because it wasn't colombia a uh it was probably colombia c or maybe d uh or a mix of b and c but uh it definitely better than you know any other concacaf team that they normally play on these partidos moleros who are a low tier Asian uh, slash Eastern European uh, team, right? And uh, I think this is a neutral because yes, uh, no one brought their A game to to this match, but perhaps this is the beginning of Zoom just you know realizing or trying to improve the quality of the opposition that Mexico faces on these kind of matches, right? Uh, I, re- I really hope that you know we continue to see rivals from South America, rivals from at least you know the the B tier, the A tier of of Europe and Asia, because um, I think that's you know where the competitive edge uh, lays, and Mexico needs to be part, you know I guess facing those teams uh, as much as they can. Um, but yeah, this is perhaps the, the one neutral that I see. Yeah, no, and to add to that, I mean Colombia, the team that Mexico might be playing in the uh, in the later rounds of Copa America. So mean Mexico advances and so mean Colombia advances. So it's always nice, even though, you know, it was an A team versus A team, uh, the coaches were able to kind of tactically uh, battle there. So um, that that's good. And yeah, I agree. I mean, anytime some, or for those of you who don't, don't know the acronym there, SOC United Marketing, um, you know, schedules a, a, a match for Mexico that is against this better opposition. It's, you know, it's, it's regardless of the score, regardless of, you know, you know, the, the I guess the the date the game was played, it's always going to be better than playing, I don't know, a friendly against Qatar, a friendly against Guatemala, or a friendly against El Salvador, or something like that. These teams are challenge Mexico more, and uh, even, you know, for these younger guys that got a chance today, um, it's always going to be a, a better matchup for them. Uh, what else you got for all right, man. Let's start with the negatives or the bad ones. Um, and the very the very first one, I think the most perhaps the biggest one is that, man, this these people from Zoom and Doña Fe they are just finessing our paisanos, man. <laughs> this is, just, I, I, man, I, I don't know if I I was debating whether or not to bring this up because we normally don't get into this kind of conversations, but I was I, I just couldn't help to feel bad and to feel you know just disappointed. Because I was watching, you know, the, the, the I guess, still the ending, and I was watching uh, other TV networks, and they were interviewing all Paisas, right? And all of them, at least 85% of them, at least the ones that they showed, that they interviewed, they all said, hey, yeah, I'm here to see Memo Cho, I'm here to see Edson Alvarez, I'm here to see Santi Jimenez, I'm here to see uh, Cesar Montes. But all of these players are not there like they didn't show up right <laughs> they, they didn't get called up because of course they were not going to get released by their european teams right. um and turns out zoom and doña fede were uh, i guess promoting these matches with the images of these players so it, it, you know it's, it's, this is just you know big bs bro uh, is it, i i don't understand for this kind of crap i think we should call it out every single time we see it because to them, it's just, you know, a freaking piggy bank, right? They're just trying to make a, a quick buck. These things are not cheap. And I don't think our, our Pisces over here deserve this kind of treatment. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they they market them with, like, you get the email of, like, uh, buy your ticket now, like, in advance. And they have pictures of Etan Alvarez or Santi Jimenez or, you know, throughout the whole stadium. They have, you know, just, just letreros and, like, signs of... Uh, of Santi and all the big stars from Mexico, they they definitely market it. Say uh, like you would assume, like if anybody that follows soccer knows that you know follows soccer a little bit, right? Knows that they probably wouldn't have came like brought their big stars just because of the the date and the. But for the casual fan, the one that wants to go apoyar la selección, like just have a good time, take their family, uh, they're getting like you said, just paying a 
crap ton of money for to go watch a subpar product uh, just for because Doña Fede wants to get money there at the end of the day. One last paycheck before exactly. the year ends. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. I mean, we normally don't want to, you know, we, we like to do the six things we learn and analyze the actual game. But yeah, I agree with you. This was kind of worth uh, mentioning just because it's such a shady, shady practice from La Federación and from Zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, but what, what else do you got for us related to the game here, man? All right, another positive. Let's go to another high note. Um, I'm going to say the first half. Like, the first half was really actually good by Mexico. They were dominating the entire half. Uh, they were actually showing some muscle. They were flexing out there. Uh, I think you mentioned to me th- after the first uh, half um, that Govea, for you, was a standout. And I, I totally agree. Um, I think Govea is one of those underrated players that uh, when El Profesorio was at the helm of El Tri, he brought into the roster and he showed some good promise, but unfortunately, he had he was still young and he was misbehaving outside of the pitch, which cost him a lot of you know growth in Belgium because he was actually a starter at a decent side in Belgium. Um, but yeah, I, I think Gobea was actually a good one. Tony Rodriguez had a couple of uh, good inter- interventions out there. I guess just proving that he is definitely worthy a third string keeper. Uh, even though maybe it's just Jimmy Lozano paying some favors. <laughs> and uh, Memo Martinez, man. Yeah, Memo Martinez, it's, it's a good note because Memo Martinez, it's a Mexican striker. And it's very odd to see a Mexican striker with his physicality. So it's nice to see that at least uh, if Henry Martin is, you know, out, out, out of, you know, the two injury and there's no one else, Roberto La Rosa is not picking up steam, uh, you can find you know, some solace, I guess, in Memo Martinez, which I wouldn't be surprised if he keeps up this this good level with Puebla. He's probably going to end up in, in Chivas. Yeah, I was going to say, Memo Martinez reminds me a lot of uh, Henry Martin, the, the type of player he is, and a stocky, strong player. Um, yeah, uh, I think he, he, did a, he did a good performance there. He uh, he got his goal. He got a, an assist there on his debut with La Selección. Um, he was being praised a lot by that first goal uh, from Govea, how he distributed that ball instead of trying to be selfish and take the goal himself. Um, you know, just because, you know, you're making your debut, you're forward, you want to strike, you want to score a goal, right, on your debut. So he was unselfish with that first goal and ultimately got the the rebound of uh, off, uh, Jordi Cortizo's uh Hit in the second half, so I uh, was rewarded there. I thought Jordi Cortizo was doing well uh, the first half before he got taken off um, in the second half. Uh, but yeah, I think first half, I agree with you. Uh, Mexico did well. Uh, they ultimately, er- early in the second half, in the 49th minute, took a two goal uh, lead. So uh, just shows their dominance there the first 50 ish minutes. Um, but uh, yeah, ultimately, that, that was to no avail. They ended up losing the match 3 2. But yeah. uh, I'm sure we'll analyze that in further detail here as we go on in this video. Uh, what else you got with us? All right, man, that was the last positive. Now we're going to go back to the negatives here, bad ones. Um, I think this was just a waste of match or waste of time for Jimmy Lozano. And I mean this in the way that, um, you know, I think th- this is one of those matches that this doesn't really matter, right? If he, lose, if he lost the match 5-0, it doesn't really matter. He's not going to get fired because of this match, right? It's, it's just a cash grab for Doña Fede and we move on. So with that in mind... These are the type of matches that you bring in young talent, young and promised, t- promising talent that you see in Liga MX, that you see somewhere else. These are the kind of matches that you bring in dual nationals to convince them to join the program. So why would you waste your time using players like Dieter Yelpado, who's 32, uh, Tonio Rodriguez, which, you know, I, I, we get it. He's a third string keeper, but he's like 31 still. Uh, Ricardo Chavez, who, yes, had an amazing apertura with San Luis, but he's 29 years old, man. I mean, there's a bunch of other players that you can actually bring to start looking where can you actually bolster, bolster your B or A team. These are the kind of matches where you, if you had a doubt, if you have a question, if you had, you know, just an inquiry or just, just some curiosity about, you know, this 20-year-old, this 18-year-old, this 19-year-old, this 21-year-old, it's actually doing well in Liga MX or MLS. You know what? Let me just invite him. Let me see what what's ha- what happens, right? Let's put him to play. If we lose by three, who cares? This match, it was this match, or at least in my opinion, should have been a uh, an opportunity for for El Jimmy Lozano and his staff to start scouting for young and promising talent for the A team. Yeah, I guess on the flip side of that, maybe Doña Fede has a has a role there, telling Jimmy, you know, I mean, we we have to put some you know older players, some players with name recognition, or you know, they're not all 
big names, right? Uh, or we can't lose 5 0. You, you don't have that luxury just because, you know, then fans will stop uh, buying in the thousands our tickets. Um, obviously, Doña Fede has interest in making sure Mexico has decent performances. Otherwise, you know, the fans, we've seen it in Mexico before. Uh, I don't yeah. know if it necessarily happens in in USA when they play in the USA just because the, the USA Mexico fan the you know los, la, la paisa la, la raza que vive en Estados Unidos likes going to those matches like a lot uh, no matter who plays on the field but uh, in Mexico we've seen it that you know Mexico racks up a couple bad games in a row and you know you start seeing that el estadio Azteca you know empty um, so maybe they didn't, they they don't want to lose four or five nil just to not lose that money. But um, I, you know I, I, you brought up a good point. I hadn't thought about maybe bringing in some dual nationals. This is a good chance for him to 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 kind of convince those guys. Hey, come come join us. Come uh, play for Mexico. This is what it's like. You know, having a, a training camp with us. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty pretty big opportunity there for Jimmy to bring some some new guys in. Yeah. For real. I mean, this is these are the chances, and why not use them, right? It isn't like the Mexican the Mexican national uh, soccer program is bad. They have a lot of money. They you know they have great uh, <laughs> facilities and whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, what else oh, you got well. for us? <laughs> All right. Uh, the, the next negative one, I think, is the last point that we learned today uh, from that match was, and this is something that you mentioned, man. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention to this, but you did some great research on it, and it it just you know it's. It's really difficult to see how Jimmy Lozano keeps struggling on closing matches, right? Like the pressure builds up and he's unable to adapt to it. And, you know, he just doesn't know how to react. He doesn't know how to, you know, make the right substitutions, when to make them. Um, just not showing any any signs of uh, adaptability to dire times, right? If, you know, he was winning to nil comfortably, comfortably and he wasn't able to keep up with that advantage. And when things started to pile up on him, he essentially did nothing to counteract uh, Colombia and their offensive uh, transition. So it is uh, it is in a situation of this match. We've seen it at Honduras on the first leg of the uh, quarterfinals of Nations League. Um, and we have also seen it on other friendly matches throughout Jimmy's short tenure with uh, El Tri. Yeah, brings the Uzbekistan match to mind where they were winning, um, uh, and, you know, and then ultimately tied and then the 92nd sec- uh, minute get scored on and lose that match 3-2 or against Germany. I mean, it was Germany, so it's kind of to be expected, but they were winning 2-1 at one point and ended up, you know, tying at the end 2-2. He need- definitely needs to find a way to close out these matches, you know, hold on to the wins or, you know, find a way to at least you know, not, not lose a drawing opportunity or a winning opportunity, not drop the intensity, um, just adapt to him. I mean, you know, we've seen him not necessarily struggle with this too much in CONCACAF. You brought up the Honduras match. I think that's kind of an outlier at this point. He's done pretty decent in CONCACAF matches. But uh, in these friendly matches against other opposition, a Conmebol opposition, Uzbekistan, which is uh, uh, UEFA, uh, Germany, UEFA, these types of matches that you're going to play a better opposition in you have to find a way to close those matches out and and win them right so um jimmy definitely has to find a way to kind of uh kind of close them out man win them um you know adrian also wanted to kind of uh bring up a couple couple items here i think you know mexico sigue con su mala racha contra colombia right one win in seven matches since 2005 which is kind of notable here and yeah. uh we, we had a, a a listener here, shout out to Johan GZZ on YouTube, um, kind of sent me a, um, a an image here from, from Twitter that he he, he found that uh, uh, fans, uh, listeners, if you guys can do some research, let us know how accurate this is. It looks accurate, but uh, últimos 15 juegos oficiales de México contra países de Conmebol, last 15 matches in Mexico against uh, Conmebol opposition, uh, they've only won one match. Uh, they've tra- they've tied four other matches, and then the other 10 are losses. So um, not a good look for Mexico against Conmebol opposition there. Um, so definitely yeah. needs to see improvement going into the Copa America next year. No, totally, man. This is a... Uh... It's a very dire situation because it just means that <laughs> Mexico has no specific luck or advantage over Colombian World teams. And, you know, he, they're not that far away from, you know, the, I guess the likes of, uh, you know, Ecuador, maybe, right? And maybe they fight against Colombia. We can definitely make a case of being 
you know, miles away from Argentina and, and Brazil, but the other ones, I don't think, I like to think that they're not that far away. Uh, but Jesus, it's just, it's been a while since the last time they were able to put up a good fight against uh, Comebol side, which was Uruguay, but that Uruguay was on a kind of, kind, kind of sort of a downward spiral whenever right. they defeated them 3-1 in Copa America. Right. 2018, I think. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, other hand, man, so the six things we learned of uh, Mexico, Colombia. Uh, bro, man, as we wrap this episode up, where can all this is find us, dude? They can always find us on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on the notifications. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast on. Last but not least, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Puro Pinche Gol. We post off every now and then. Yeah, make sure to follow us and let us know in the comments below. We definitely like interacting and reading with you guys, uh, reading you guys' comments there. Um, so let us know what you thought of this match. Uh, I personally thought it was a little bit more entertaining than what we gave it credit for on, uh, before the match yeah. started. Um, <laughs> decent match. Uh, we There were some some takeaways there. Uh, do you agree with our takeaways? Any takeaways that you noted from the match uh, that you think Jimmy needs to work on or that you want to give uh, Jimmy credit for? Uh, let us know below, definitely. Adrian, man. Another good one with you, brother. Uh, sad Sunday, like we said. Theater's lost, but... Uh, yeah, I'll see if we recover soon, man. <laughs> I'll see you, yeah. man. Yeah. Take it easy, guys. Bye.